in three, two, one, cut down. Stand by for terminal count. This is no ordinary balloon. What a view. This is incredible. An Ontario County nonprofit. Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. One of the biggest things that we have issues with is landing in trees. So today I want to talk about uh, what we're going to do on an upcoming flight for Overlook Horizon 17 to try to help resolve some of these situations. So in the past, our resolution to not landing in a tree, or at least trying not to land in a tree, was as simple as looking at the map and going, mm, looks like there's not a lot of trees here. Let's try this. And uh, that has not always worked out so well. We've landed in trees on many flights. Uh, we landed in a tree on our solar eclipse flights. We landed in a tree on our first big flight last year. Landed in the tree deep in the forest last year. We landed in a tree with the space lobster. So we've been in the tree a number of times. And a lot of times those trees have our payload hanging very, very high up off the ground. It makes it really difficult to try to recover that payload. So what we now have implemented is a new cut down system. This is a two-way radio that's been added to the payload. So that two-way radio allows us to send and receive information from the payload without actually having to come in contact with it. So we can do this during flights. Uh, we can do this while it's on the ground. So there's a number of things that we can do with this two-way radio. But the first thing that we're going to tackle with this is the cutdown mechanism. Now, there's two types of cutdown mechanisms that people generally implement. There's a cutdown mechanism to actually release the balloon, sever the balloon, and then immediately abort the flight and start parachuting right away. And then the second type of cutdown system is what we're implementing. That is a payload cutdown, which is severing the payload from the rest of the payload train, including the parachute and the balloon. Now, that brings up some obvious safety concerns that we have to be concerned with because we don't want to cut the payload away from the parachute at 100,000 feet in the air. And it would just come plummeting down to earth at free fall speed, basically, all the way until it smashed into the ground. Very, very bad. So we've got some software safeguards on board that are going to make sure that that doesn't happen. We also have to send a couple of special commands from the ground with our transmitter on the ground and it's gonna to go to the payload box and the payload has to receive them perfectly in the right order in order to implement a cut down. So this is what it looks like. There's a long range radio transceiver on board or otherwise known as a LoRa or LoRa transceiver. That LoRa transceiver allows us to have two way communication with the balloon. On the ground, we have a ground station that also has a LoRa transceiver that can transmit to the balloon and receive from the balloon. So here's a look at the ground station. This is what we're going to use to transmit the message to the payload. It's a little bit uh, ugly right now because this extra board here, this is the added board right here. Um, and it's very roughly put together, a bunch of solder bridges, so nothing too fancy. And the rest of it is our normal flight computer. This is what would, could, would potentially fly on board one of our weather balloon flights, but uh, we've repurposed this particular one to be a ground station. But the nice thing is we could pop this board off and put it on any of our regular flight computers and transform it into a ground station just by popping that board off. And inside the payload, it has a similar board just without the buttons. So the buttons here, we've got a mode select button. This chooses uh, which message we're gonna send to the payload. And then the other button here is our actual transmit button. That's what actually sends the message to the payload. So here's what we have implemented today. This is our super sophisticated test platform being my ladder and a two by four, which is hanging the payload off the ground. This is essentially what uh, is gonna simulate that the balloon is stuck in a tree. This is where the payload is connected to the balloon train. Then we've added this new piece of string here, just this short piece of string with key rings on either side of it. And in the center of it is our cut down mechanism. That right there is basically two electrical wires bridged by a nichrome wire. That nichrome wire will get really, really hot and essentially melt that string so that it breaks and sets the payload free. All right, first, we gotta turn the payload on. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, we'll do a test. Make sure I can communicate with the payload from way over here. So we'll try that now. 
Perfect. And the payload responded to me. So now we will arm the cutdown system. All right, so the cutdown system's armed. Okay, let's hope this works. Ready? In three, two, one, cut down. And so there it is, successful cut down. You can see the nichrome wire here. String is gone, everything's still intact. Here's what's left of the string. You can tell this, this like nylon string here just melts instead of burns so that we don't start a forest fire. All right, so it works on the ground. Looks like everything is A-OK -okay in that department. Now the next big test is gonna be uh, on one of our flights. We always hope not to land in a tree, but the next test will be when we land in a tree and we gotta figure out if uh, this thing works or not. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, look out for our flight, Overlook Horizon 17, launching on Monday, June 24th, hopefully, as long as the weather holds up. But uh, that's when uh, this system will first fly. My name's Tori, this is Overlook Horizon. We'll see you soon, goodbye.